us at FDIC. We have cranked off the HOT program with about 2,500 students getting out of here on buses this morning. The weather is absolutely perfect. It was a little nasty when I came in. I don't know if yeah. it was raining and uh, cloudy, but uh, you guys have some phenomenal uh, weather folks at your TV stations, and we made a call, and the sun <laughs> came out. So uh, it's absolutely great. We are at the live at FDIC podcast booth. We'd like to welcome you. Uh, this booth is brought to you by Firehouse Subs this year. And uh, for those of you who may not know, the Firehouse Subs is providing lunch for all the hot program as a sponsorship, 2,500 lunches for Monday and Tuesday to all the hands-on training. They also have a foundation, the Firehouse Subs Public Safety Foundation. It's at firehousesubsfoundation.org. And any public safety organization can go online and apply for funding for various tools and equipment. And uh, um, it's a very good and, and easy way to help supplement, especially a lot of the volunteer agencies that are out there. So check that out. And uh, I'm joined today, um, this is sort of the editor's corner, I guess, as we, we will call it, as a, I'm the editor in chief of fire engineering and the education director. But I've got Chris McClune here, who is the editor in chief of Fire Apparatus and Equipment Magazine, and the illustrious doctor. The doctor. We got one guy who can actually write out of the editorial staff, and that is Dr. Ted Lee, who is the editor in chief of the Journal of Emergency Medical Services. Thank you guys for being here. Ted, this is your second FDIC. Second, yeah, so, second year. So you're a pro now. You're all <laughs> yeah. at it. Chris, you've been doing this for a long, yeah. long time. This is probably about 22nd, I think. 22nd yeah. year? Yeah. This is my 28th year. Wow. Uh, 27 as an instructor, or, well, I did uh, from 98 to about 90, let's see, 98 to 2003 as an instructor, and then started doing the hands-on logistics. So, Chris, fire equipment, man. Uh it's a big industry. It is. And uh, I mean, it, it, it's rebounding, I guess you could say right now. Um, what we experienced during the pandemic were, and, and everybody knows, I'm not saying anything that, that people don't know. We experienced greater lead times. We experienced the backlogs that we've never seen before. Um, some material costs, uh, increases, but it's, it's starting to rebound. And I, and I really think that one of the things that's Showing it to me is I don't think I've ever seen more trucks out on the parking floor. lot. Was full. Yeah. Yeah. Was I, full. You know, so I mean, like business is starting to boom again. It's coming around now. It's not a perfect world yet. Right. Um, you know, we are still uh, we are still waiting a number of times. Uh, we, we do still have the, the increased lead times. But one of the things I think you're going to find this week, if you're here or if you are following us on uh, fireapparatus.com or fireengineering.com or even gems, because this is. This has impacted the uh, um, the ambulance world as well. Yeah. Um, what you're going to see is um, a lot of companies are starting to to, I guess, talk more about some of the standard type of rigs that that they have. So we all love customizing our trucks. I mean, there's there's nothing you know, but you know, if you can sacrifice a little bit or compromise, I should say, a little bit on some of those customizations. There are a lot of trucks out there that you can buy that are that are sort of standard models uh, right. that also uh, they they typically do get to you a little quicker and they are typically at a at a little bit of a reduced rate. So customization equals dollars. Oh, for sure, for sure, <laughs> always. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, my my volunteer uh, fire company. I mean, we're you know we 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 do a fair amount, especially on our rescue truck. That usually gets very very uh, customized with a lot of the equipment mounting. Uh, a lot of the uh, uh, just just a lot of the compartmentation and, and things like that. When we talk about the equipment side of things, uh, I mean, first of all, it, one of the greatest things about about this event, and I'm sorry, Ted, I will let you talk at some point. Uh, one of the greatest <laughs> things about this event is just how many uh, firefighter owned uh, companies are here. And when you give any firefighter a problem to solve, uh, they will come up with a great tool, a great a, a great new product to do. And, and that's one of the things that we always get to see here. Um, also on the equipment side, I'm expecting to, to learn a bit about PPE this year. Uh, right. We've talked a lot um, during the past the past year, past couple of years, 
But it, I think really during 2023 and so far to the beginning of 24, we're really, really starting to see an uptick in coverage on on PFAS and, you know, the especially when it comes to PPE. So I think this year we're going to learn a lot more from the PPE companies who are here just about what they're doing to right. uh, to re to reduce and any types of exposure. Pretty much all of them have committed to to removing them from the gear. And yep. we know there's going to be trade offs. So they're having sure. to look for alternatives to to make up for those trades. Mm -hmm. Have you seen any uh, have you seen anything that that's caught your eye that may be new or are uh, uh, innovative that that we didn't have last year? Um, wow. Uh, I, I've been out there a bit. Uh, the, the the more equipment type stuff is still being set up. Uh, I will say that uh, I'm, I'm expecting to see, and I did already see um, some multiplexing. This gets back to the trucks, um, some multiplexing products out there. And I think that kind of gets back to what we saw last year at FDIC as well, where there was a tremendous amount of technology uh, coming out. Now, multi multiplexing is not necessarily new technology, mm -hmm. but there is starting to be more of a focus on it from different companies creating maybe some different, um, some different, uh, 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 what's the word of uh, proprietary systems. Gotcha. Um, so, uh, so I think, I think we're going to see that. And there was one that, that I saw out there that, uh, that was a particular of note. I saw, uh, I think it was 3 AM. They've got a firefighter tracking mm -hmm. system that's tied into their communication devices. And they're actually, uh, supplying those for one of the classes. And and if you go into their their booth, you actually get to see oh, okay. you know the class real time up there. Let's shift gears a little bit and talk about the Journal of Emergency Medical Services. Um, the you know this this conference is built around education, and uh, we have a massive process to sort through the numerous proposals and and try to pick the best classes, but. We're trying to have a good balance, and uh, this year we came up with a with a great EMS yeah. lineup. So talk a little bit about what kind of training you can get here well, at the FDIC. Last year, of course, was my first year and kind of inherited the the group. But um, the normal marriage of EMS and fire is is growing, and it's always kind of been out there, but um, it's becoming more and more of a, a player in the in the industry. And, you know, firefighters need this kind of training and they're looking for this type of training. So, you know, to have it here at FDIC is just uh, a natural fit for that. Um, so they can pop into the hot classes and then pop out to a workshop on infection control or something along instructor lines. Um, and then we have the standard classes just with the normal rotation on cardiology or pharmacology. Um, we have, of course, medical legal. Uh, next year, we'll be looking at mobile integrated health and um, community paramedic because that's a big trend. And a lot of fire departments are moving towards that as well. So there's a ton of questions about that. So it, it is a great opportunity here for the entire week. Um, there is something that's medical every session um, throughout the week. There are medical opportunities um, for providers who, who are dual credited. Um, last year, we had about 12,000 providers um, that held an EMS certification. Now we know a lot of the fire departments have a requirement to have at least an EMT, um, but that right. was only about 36% of the group that came last year. Um, the rest were advanced EMTs, paramedics, critical care, some flight medics. Um, we did have some people come that were um, community-based non-fire um, or even hospital-based. So FDIC is is not just the fire conference, nothing, not to take away from that. I mean, it is a huge fire conference and it, it's an amazing opportunity here. Um, but we are seeing the trend of fire departments are doing medical care. It is part of the normal job and we're trying to meet that need. Right. And if you look on the uh, schedule, if you haven't noticed it yet, you'll see the star of life on in a lot of classes that you might not have traditionally thought right. like several of the hands-on classes, um, whether it's live fire staffing, uh, live fire actions for limited staffing, um, search and rescue, anything right. that had anything to do with patient removal, patient care. We were able to partner up with uh, CAPSI, Capsi and, right. yeah. and you get you get credit for yeah. that towards your research, which is always a pain uh, yeah. to, to keep up with. For firefighters, I know for sure they're always like trying to get online and get it. So if you're here at the conference, you can look for that, yeah. and I think there's a barcode scan. And right, there's QR codes that um, CAPSI has provided this year. Um, each instructor has a packet, so they're able to um, scan as they go, and it creates um, a, a transcript 
for the individual. They will have to download the CAPSI app though right. to make sure that they're getting credit for it. Um, but it's, it's kind of seamless. Um, if you marry that with our learning platform, um, fire engineering training or GEMS training, um, you get the credits through CAPSI. It, it makes certification or recertification very easy. Um, and it's just one more service that we're trying to, to have with so many people coming in looking for individual training. Um, they get to pick and choose. I, I want this hot class, but I need this medical class. I'm looking for trauma here. Um, we're trying to cover all the bases um, to, to make it kind of a one-stop shop. Right. And big news today, we were completely sold out for our hands-on training and our hands-on training workshops. So uh, that was that was phenomenal to get. Um, well, since uh, Firehouse Subs has graciously decided to sponsor this podcast booth, it's only fitting that we talk about them just a little bit. So <laughs> Ted, um, I know you're the EMS guy and you're, you're always eating healthy <laughs> to maintain your physique. Um, What's your favorite firehouse sub? Firehouse does have good salads, but the the hook and ladder is my <laughs> hook and ladder. Is my go-to. Yeah. What now? Which one is that? Is that the corn? No, that it has ham. Um, and oh, that's the hot. It, that's the hot one. Uh, you, can you get it either way? No, you can get it either okay. way. So toasted, of course. Fully loaded. Fully loaded. So mine is definitely not one of the traditional fire names. I like the Italian. Yeah. Uh, I love the Italian with the old salt and vinegar chips. All right, Chris, you're up. <laughs> well, I haven't found one yet that I don't like, but the one I'm looking most forward to trying coming up is the Rapid Rescue. I'm in a rep, I'm in a rescue company, so <laughs> I, I see rescue on a, on a sandwich. I'm like, I gotta I gotta try that out. <laughs> awesome. All right, Chris. So, what? You're probably the busiest man here. Everybody thinks I am, but you're uh, you have quite the schedule because <laughs> you're doing a lot of filming. So, what all you got on your plate this week? Let's see. Well, I'm going to be here uh, a number of times in, in, in the podcast booth, both for so – I'll be talking to some some manufacturers, but I'll also be doing some uh, – later today at, at 12 noon, right after this one, actually. Um, I'll be talking – I'll be doing a water delivery podcast with uh, two of our advisory board members, uh, Andy Sacadato and Bill Atkins. They're going to join me today to talk about that. We're going to be answering uh, questions that we've received from the uh, – uh, from the audience uh, this time. So it's, uh, it's not any real set agenda outside of answering these questions as they've come through. Yeah, I, I do have a lot of appointments out there on the show floor that, you know, usually, you know, these first couple of days is ramping up and then right. Thursday, it's like you just get clobbered. But, yeah. uh, you know, there'll be a, a number of um, number just of, of, of booth tours that I'll be doing uh, that then we will communicate to everybody, you know, what what's, what's out there. Um, you know, and um, also... Um, also, we'll be doing some filming at some of them. We also, and we'll be posting throughout the week, just what, what, another one of the, the things for me about this event is how um, when you're out at the hot sites today, for example, they're not, they're not only learning tactics. The students are not only, you know, learning some new ways, some new, some, new, some new theories, some new ways to do things. They are also, whether they know it or not, trying out new equipment that, right. you know, that you're just starting to see here. They're getting, they're, they're almost getting the first crack, not quite the first crack, but they're getting a first crack at it. And that's another one of the important things I think about this. And I'll be, you know, it's something I always write about while I'm here is just that, that, uh, that marriage. Now, speaking of, you know, I'm going backwards a little bit. I did get here last week and uh, I was able to go to a number of different stations throughout the, throughout the city to do, to do some filming. And, you know, I also usually like to reinforce that relationship that we have with the IFD. You know, oh, those, absolutely. Those, those, the, we couldn't the, do it without them. No, absolutely yeah. not. It's been incredible. And they were so welcoming to me. You know, I yeah. kind of, I kind of feel, I kind of felt like I was intruding, you know, a little bit, but uh, Rita, uh, chief Rita, uh, right. Uh, who, uh, who's the PIO. She set it all up for me. They actually took the companies out of service while I was there. So once I heard that, I was like, I am not standing between, you know, these guys <laughs> And, and, and work. So I tried to get it done as quickly as possible. But we got some really good information uh, out of Ladder 10 and Station 3. And I also went to the museum, which was really great. And if, if you do have it, that, that went up. We posted a video today on that. So if you, if you are in town or even if you're not in town, but you, you do get out to Indy every so often, that, that's a great location. It's a great, uh, it's a great museum. They have yep. a lot of, uh, of good stuff. And if you're, if you're kind of a truck nut like some of us are, they got, they've got, uh, they got a number of rigs in there too. Some yeah. of which were Indy shop built. Uh, right. believe it or not right. so and that's out on mass ave uh all the way 
right there at the end is part of the union hall mm -hmm. complex. And uh, that was one of the first places that I went, uh, as a little extracurricular activity, my first time here, they used to have a big union hall bash. And uh, I think there's, we've still got that going on Friday. Yep. Uh, there'll be bagpipes out there and uh, just a lot of fun to get out there on the street and uh, see that see that museum. By the way, David is the busiest. Just, just <laughs> to clear that up. You know, uh, my, 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 uh, my Super Bowl comes later in the week, but he's, he's, he's on. He's, he's switched on all week. I, I don't it's know. It's a 12-day adventure. Yeah, I don't <laughs> know how you do adventure. it. I really don't. So Ted, this is your second year. What uh, what blew you away um, about FDIC? That was your first one last year, right? Yeah, last year was the first one. Um, just the amount. I mean, I'd been to conferences before, um, but you know, hi, here at the convention center, and then the walk down the hallway uh, to Lucas Oil, um, being on the Colts, you know, <laughs> stadium floor, looking around, it just. You know, all the vendors and, you know, I come from a fire family. So uh, and I was a fire medic for a very short period of time. So, you know, I kind of know the, the background and stuff. Um, but um, just to see, you know, so many trucks and apparatus mm -hmm. and all the equipment out um, and then, you know, the hallway with all the the, um, the firefighter owned um, companies that that are doing kind of the niche stuff. Um, it's just, you know, an amazing opportunity uh, to see. And then, you know, for the, the medical component, there are so many medical vendors here because they realize that the fire departments are doing more medical. So, um, you know, you see the Zoll and um, we're sponsored um, with a lot of our events. Um, I simulate, of course, is, is sponsoring some of our stuff. We have the GEMS clinical competition um, going on in um Teleflex will have the cadaver lab. Cadaver labs are always very interesting. Those sold Those out. Are they usually are. Yeah. Um, we have Lunch and Learns um, this year with the Eagles. Um, Dr. Pepe and his group of medical directors. That's a big draw, of course. Um, Impact EMS um, is a new partnership, and they're offering a canine casualty course on Tuesday, and then the flight paramedic and critical care paramedic prep class. And then another partnership with the International Board of Specialty Certifications is offering testing on site, which has never been offered before, of course. Um, so, the, you know, the expansion of the medical GEMS aspect, GEMS at FDIC, um, the footprint is probably two to three times bigger than it was the year yep. before, you know, two times bigger last year. Um, so, yeah, really exciting from the medical aspect as well. And there's still spots available in a couple of those uh, K-9 class. And yes, and the, the flight paramedic prep. And we understood that, you know, this was, you know, the first year. There's always mm -hmm. the first year. There's a kind of a, oh, I had no idea that this was available. Right. Um, in our conversations with International Board of Specialty Certifications, they knew that, you know, they have done testing at other conferences before because now they're able to travel post-COVID because before they were like, oh, no, we can't travel with this test. And then they're like, oh, yes, we can. This is we have the technology to be able to do this. They know that, you know, the first couple runs, you know, the numbers, they grow. And so mm -hmm. we have a small number the first time. Oh, this is available here. You know, next year it'll be even more. Third year, you know, we'll probably have, you know, sold out classes. And it's important to know that that's available to anybody. Like the, the canine care, that could be a police officer yes. as a canine unit. It could be military. Search and rescue. Uh, search and yeah, rescue. Anybody that start. handles dogs. Yeah. Yep. So you don't have to be with the fire department to necessarily uh, come and enroll in, in some of these classes that we have. Chris, uh, a veteran of FDIC. Um Aside from your many duties and all, what's your favorite part? Fire trucks. <laughs> <You know. laughs> no, I mean it, it really is because um, it, I, I I love looking at them, um, but I, I I say that uh, somewhat in jest. I mean that's that's one of the biggest parts. But um, I really enjoy the opportunity that you get. I mean, like the the people who are here with with the booze are really like you know really. Um, the, the the high level folks at, at at these at these manufacturers, you're really getting to talk to some of their brightest. You know, some of them are the 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 engineers who are who are working on these, uh, the product managers and stuff like that. So you really do get to learn from them, uh, especially as you know as as I go back and now I'm you know we're playing we're we're already starting to think about some some new trucks down down the road. Um, also uh, also really uh, looking at the looking at the new equipment that's coming out, but I don't know. I mean, like this right here, the camaraderie that, that everybody has, I mean, there's, there is not, I mean, everybody who comes here, you know, they're not being forced, 
you know, they're, they're, they want to be here. And when you have that many people, you know, trying to better themselves and in turn the fire service, I think that probably is, is my favorite part of the, uh, the how, whole event. How many long-term friends do you think you have that you've met? Oh here? my gosh. All of them. <laughs> <laughs> or do, do you have any friends? I have quite a few. Do you? Yeah, okay. Yeah, quite Just a few. Or at least I say they're my friends, you know, we'll, we'll see. <laughs> well, yeah. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have put a survey out or anything, but you know, <laughs> Um, Speaking of camaraderie, David. Yeah, that's all part of it. Uh, <laughs> Ted hadn't been here long enough to develop, <laughs> to develop any, but we're going to get him there. We're going to we're going to get him out and introduce him, set him up on a couple of uh, blind service calls, <laughs> and, and get him in. There's a lot of EMS stuff going in. So yeah. let's talk about um, some of the new stuff this year. Uh, really excited about. Um, I was super excited till I figured out how much work it was, extra work it was going to be uh, when we started talking about the Lucas Oil experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, the team, uh, we listened to the customer feedback uh, that we got from the fire station of the future. Uh, a lot of the surveys uh, pointed us in the direction that the attendee wants to do more than just walk by and look at equipment. Mm -hmm. They want to put their hands on the yeah. equipment and actually use it and get to to see how it feels and 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 just have some type of experience with it so we developed the lucas oil experience which is an interactive uh oh. journey around the football field there mm -hmm. in health and wellness um in robotics and technology in command and control um in EMS, yeah. and then in the center is the drill yard, which is very similar to like a fire academy drill yard, complete with a burn building um, that's uh, a digital and, and simulated smoke. Um, unfortunately, Lucas Oil Stadium would not approve our live <laughs> our request for live fire inside the stadium, so we had to go with a digital version. But we're not talk we're not talking about like the hands-on class we bust out. We're talking about being able to expand training from Monday, Tuesday, lectures on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, to some really hands-on experience that you can put your hands on the equipment and, and also some of those that are being offered, and these are all free of charge um, for the attendee to sign up. We've got Elkhart doing their brass tacks and hard mm -hmm. facts out there. We've got Bullard Thermal Imaging releasing a new camera here at the show, and they're going to have a, a hands-on class out there in that burn building. Um, we've got groups that are doing vehicle stabilization, electric vehicles, hybrid vehicles. Um, Women in Fire is doing a class on fire attack and hose movement. Um, we've got the ISFSI instructors doing 1403 prep and just some just some good basic instructor development. Um, Chris Minichello and East Coast Rescue are doing forcible entry. And this list just exploded. So we took some of the hot instructors, put them out there. Um, we've got the Georgia, Indiana, and Oklahoma Smoke Diver Group are doing a search and rescue class out there. So there's going to be a ton of activity mm -hmm. and uh, – Ted, I know you spent a lot of time working on the EMS hands-on portion. So run us through yeah. what all we're going to have out um, there. It was very interesting to, to see just, you know, the firehouse of the future last year. And, you know, to your point of, you know, what the people were looking for, but also what some of the vendors were looking for as well. And the, in the convention center, you have the typical walk-by that you see. And, you know, some people get their hands on the equipment, but it, it, it's not necessarily designed mm -hmm. fully for that experience. Where Lucas Oil has, has been shifted totally towards that so we have the the gems ems evolution area we uh have partnered with um indianapolis ems and they'll be doing some hands-on stuff for us um and cap has uh credit for those experiences as well um i simulate teleflex uh bender lift um are, are just to name a few of the customers that'll be there that'll have equipment out to where you can actually experience equipment, get your hands on and go through more than just the, oh, I get to see it on display and I get to touch it a little bit. And that's kind of cool um, to where you actually get to spend a little bit more time with it. We have the XR um, studios that have, you know, fire, search and rescue, law enforcement and EMS 
um, experiences for virtual reality or mixed reality. iSimulate is going to be out there with their um, virtual reality um, as well as part of um, a partnership with them and Air Methods. Um, so there's a lot going on in, in Lucas Oil that's different than um, the the standard convention center. So it's what uh, have you got to check out any of that virtual reality? Do you know exactly what they're doing? Um, yes, actually. And from my background in education, you know, I've used virtual reality before. So, you know, patient care. And of course, with the fire aspect, um, it, it's always the opportunity of you can put somebody repeatedly in something without all the setup, without necessarily the danger and the wear and tear on the individual or the equipment. And so that when they actually go out to the fire yard or they go out to the, the drill yard, um, you know, then the one time setup and the, it's the experience is better. So um, same thing, you know, you can see 10 cardiac patients, 10 minutes at a shot. And then when you go out on the ambulance, you're like, wait a minute, I've been through this before. I've seen these different alterations. So to experience um, virtual reality, it, it's definitely something that's there from an educational standpoint. I think we'll see it you know, more and more as people get to experience it in, like at FDIC, um, you're like, wow, we could bring this back to the department and we could see value in this. And I think that's why um, it's been really exciting working on Lucas Oil this time because of that type of continued education opportunity. So is this uh, computer screens or, or like we're going to see people with the goggles? On? No, you'll have people with the goggles, um, <laughs> um, but they also have just the computer screens. And what, what makes the virtual reality is so nice is it's adaptable to the department's needs. Um, if they don't have, you know, um, goggle sets, you know, they could display it up to where a group could sit down and they could talk about the scene as it goes through and what they're experiencing. Um, so it's very user friendly and an expansive, you know, your budget, of course, um, deals with it. But it's always fun to, to watch somebody with the goggles on and then see them waving their arms around and you're like, what are they doing? <laughs> and then you look over at the computer screen and go, oh, that's what they see. Okay, now I, I'm kind of immersed in their environment as well. Maybe some good video and some good uh, yeah. outtakes. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, I know you've seen those commercials <laughs> where uh, like the lady crashes through the oven door and, right. and, yeah. Yeah. Stuff. and then uh, or they're throwing I'm old the enough to remember to the, the TV and yeah. we you're right. Kind of like the Wii. Like the Wii. kids yeah. had the Wii. You had to make sure you had that lantern <laughs> on. If you're playing the tennis app, you can bust the flat screen wide open. Um, Chris, talk a little bit about fire apparatus, emergency equipment magazine. What you got on the horizon? Well, let's see. Well, uh, our May issue. By the uh, way, the biggest magazine on the market. <laughs> the largest magazine on the market, I must say. Um. We've got a, we've got an article coming up in our May issue. April's out, uh, and it, you know, if you're here, uh, you can go to our booth and, and you can get it. Um, uh, but uh, May, I, th I think the most important thing in May, and that's one of the things you know, based on what we saw last year here at FDIC, we've got a um, we've got a, we've got an article on uh, EV fires uh, mm. and a, a lot of the equipment that's out there to start to uh, to, to assist us in, in extinguishing them. Although we know they're never quite extinguished, but you know. Uh, there's there are a lot of tools under development uh, to get uh, to to bring those fires at least under control um, and cool things also that the vehicle can at least be moved some somewhere else. Um, let me think, boy, you know uh, we've always got um, you know we've been moving. You know we we've got our podcast that we do once right. a week. Um, you know, and that's that's been uh, that that's that's been pretty successful so far. We've got our regulars. Uh, Ricky Riley, who's doing one of the, uh, you know, speaking of some of those new things that we have at the show, one of mm -hmm. the hybrid uh, workshops with uh, Mike Champo. Um, we've got Andy Sacadato and uh, Bill Atkins, who will be here with me later. Uh, we've recently brought on Nick Wilbur, uh, and uh, uh, he's got a, a wind slaw. And, um, uh, oh gosh, his name is escaping me at the moment. Moody. His last name is Alex Moody. Uh, uh, he's kind of our rescue guy now. So we've got a good stable of people who are, who are coming on regularly? Nick actually, uh, he he decided to uh, take it on himself. His last one, he did a good job. Everything worked out. Everything worked out well. Um, so you're going to start to see maybe a little less of me and more of a, a more of our our podcasters. Uh, but so we we've, we've been doing that more and more. Um, again, I mean, you know, it, it's you know, we're, we're 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 doing our best to make sure that you know you can make the most informed purchasing decisions that right. you can. Uh, everything that we do is, is geared around that, uh, making sure that, uh, that you know what's available. Uh, 
we let you take care of the tactics, David, and the yeah, fire try. engineering. But uh, you know, but uh, you there's know, there's a lot. To, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. There's definitely just when you get into driver training right. and things like that, and that's another thing we probably will see. I see out there, you know, there's driver simulators out there to to help to help uh, to help in, you know, so so you're not wrecking a truck, obviously, <laughs> but. Uh, you know, I, I've I've done a couple of them, and they're they're pretty they're they're, they're pretty dead on. Those yeah. they've they've the gotten seats, and they've gotten much better good. over time. Yeah. Uh, you know, they're really uh, you know, if you it gives you a chance to you know, a lot of people today, it gives you a chance to step up. I guess you right. could say a lot of like I mean, just on 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 the volunteer side, and I'm sure on the career side, um, we don't have the the same group. This is not a negative. I am not being negative. I'm just saying we don't have people who, you know, like 50 years ago, there were truckers that, right. you know, that was their side job, you yeah. know, so they were used to driving vehicles that are, that are that large. A lot of times today, you know, you don't have that familiarity with, with a vehicle that large. You look at Pennsylvania, uh, you know, we don't require a CDL to operate an emergency vehicle. So you've got people who may have just, you know, you know I don't want to say they were driving, you know, like uh, what, what, like a smart car before they got into uh, <laughs> before they got into a fire truck, but nothing of that size. And when you, you know, you put 750 or a thousand gallons of water in there, you know, uh, so those, those simulators are, 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 are really, really great. Yeah. So that's, I mean, that, that's the that's worst in a than a tanker, uh, straight shift tanker <laughs> on the mountain road. <laughs> um, so if uh, somebody happens to be listening out there and they're not familiar um, with fire apparatus, how do they get it? How do they get a copy? How do they get a copy? Well, um, you can go on to fireapparatus.com. Uh, there is a there's an area where you can subscribe. You'll just need to give us a, a little bit of information about yourself. You know where what your role is in the department and stuff, so that you know. Because if we were to see a shift, you know, and and you know there were more for. Uh, for more EVTs than chiefs or something, right. something like that. You know, we're always watching that so that we can adjust, you know, what, you know, what we're writing about and things of that nature. So that's, you know, I, I only bring that up because some people they're like, I don't want to give you any information whatsoever, right. you know, well, um, there's always a trade-off when the price is right. 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 Yeah. Well, it is a free magazine. <laughs> is a free so magazine. You, know, you gotta, you gotta help us All out a little bit. Sign up for it. And, uh, uh, but you know, but I mean, as well, though, I mean, we, we do some pretty comprehensive coverage on fireapparatus.com as right. well. Uh, so, I mean, make sure that, uh, you know, uh, we've got a, a lot of a lot of original content there that, that we get up there every month uh, besides, you know, the, the magazine coverage. So but I, I think really what what jumps out of me, you said what's upcoming, uh, really what's jumping out of me is the, uh, the the EV article that we did. And in June, you know, we'll have an FDIC wrap up. Right. You know, we that's have always a great one. We have uh, we have our advisory board out here, uh, and we always ask them, hey, you know, from your area of expertise, talk about what you saw at the show and what impressed you the most. So, right. uh, so they'll be they'll be doing that. And there's so. plenty to write about. Oh, absolutely, plenty. absolutely. Ted, uh, you guys don't have a print magazine, but no. you're online. So tell everybody a little bit about the uh, Gems online. Of course, Gems.com is, is where you find us, and then we also have. Um, Microsites with um, emsairway.com and emsrig.com. Um, we're looking a little bit differently at, at some of the focus. Um, you know, we have the different topic tabs that you go through, um, but we're open for all things that are pre-hospital medicine. So it doesn't matter if it comes from the flight side or the fire side, if it's volunteer, if it's paid organizations, um, hospital-based. Um, we're starting partnerships. We've started a new partnership with the National Association of Mobile Integrated Healthcare Providers, and they'll be providing content for us in Mobile Integrated Health and Community Paramedic. Um, in uh, monthly articles, um, they'll be doing quarterly podcasts. They'll be doing quarterly webinars on those topics. Um, we've partnered with um, a um, nonprofit organization, Mind the Frontline, which is mental health and wellness for first responders, but all first responders, military, nursing, of course, um, um, fire, police, EMS, but we're having them um, work on the EMS component for us um, more. And again, they'll be doing monthly content with blogs, um, quarterly podcasts, quarterly webinars, uh, medical search and rescue um, with medical special operations group out of Florida is a new partnership as well. So we're looking at the search and rescue component. That's kind of why we got interested in the, oh, we have an opportunity with uh, impact EMS for the canine care because canines are used so much for search and rescue as well. Um, so um, we've been pretty um, pretty open to the topics. You know, we're all, all always looking for authors. 
Um, we have the GEMS training, which is our, our learning management system. So there's some crossover with, you know, what's happening on um, the online magazine and what's happening in there for continuing education. And then, of course, the book division. We're looking to expand the GEMS book division. So we're looking for authors and stuff like that. But um, like I mentioned before, we are open for all things pre-hospital medicine. It doesn't matter where it's coming from. Um, we're talking with some other groups about some of the specialty niches so that we make sure that we have that kind of content. Um, and we're not only looking for paramedic or, you know, community paramedic or, or mobile integrated health. You know, we'd like to hear from EMTs. We'd like to hear from advanced EMTs because in a lot of places, I mean, I grew up my EMS career in North Carolina and South Carolina, and we used advanced EMTs. Mm -hmm. It was intermediates at the time, but advanced EMTs quite a bit, especially in the rural areas. Um, so, you know, there's a, a new influx of that um, to where a lot of services are looking at, well, how do we bolster our workforce where when paramedics are also kind of hard to find. Um, so they're doing this with the advanced EMTs now. So, you know, we'd like to have content about that to, to help that group, especially, you know, rural medicine is suffering probably more than anybody right. else. We're talking a lot about it in, in the urban places. And, you know, the GEMS Innovation Summit is going on Tuesday and Wednesday here. Um, and, and that's metropolitan. I mean, right. these are the big city. Right. Um, and I, I think we have 65 um, directors, assistant directors, medical directors coming from the largest agencies um, across the United States. But, you know, rural medicine, of course, is suffering as well as yeah. hospitals are closing down as, you know, recruitment and retention. And just is staffing overall yeah, staffing for fire and EMS yeah. is, is tough. Um, and we've got a new medical director. We do. Uh, Dr. Sarah Fabiano, um, she'll be with us. She's flying in today. Um, so she'll, she'll be around. Um, she'll be at the Innovation Summit. She'll be popping in um, to the various GEMS events. Um, she will also be um, presenting at the GEMS clinical competition in between the setups. Um, that has CAPSI um, credit as well. You got to sit through the whole, the whole competition and that'll be in Lucas Oil on Thursday afternoon. Um, but we're trying to make sure that, you know, if you come to a medical component or a medical presentation that you are getting credit for it because Absolutely. of course um you know training is the focus here and we want to make sure that it's quality and, and that they're getting the latest information awesome well we've got a ton going on at fire engineering too we launched a brand new uh look and layout in march uh with a new logo um which is uh displayed there but uh we doing some things with the photography and the covers that are a little just to kind of modernize and and uh, give it a new look. The inside has a different layout, different font, and we're very, very pleased. Um, in fact, uh, March was truck company uh, month on the editorial calendar. And I mean, I've been reading this magazine for a long time and um, I saw most of the lineup that Diane had put together mm -hmm. and I'd read most of the, the stuff. But when I actually got the magazine and sat down and started, I was like, this is probably my favorite issue of all times it was non-stop really? just really good street level truck company tactics and i was like man it's just a, such a great launch of the new new look and everything so we have that and obviously if you're at the show the april magazine has uh has hit uh the editorial this month revolution um coincides with the keynote that i got going on on uh um wednesday and uh also, some big news. Um, we are totally taking Firefighter Nation in a different direction, and we're going to focus on health, wellness. Um, that includes medical health as well as mental health, um, lifestyle, and leadership. And uh, we have uh, brought Stephanie White from Fairfax mm -hmm. on board to be our managing uh, editor, and she brings like She's such a great writer and she's yeah. not afraid to tackle some tough issues and, and she's going to be in charge of uh, getting that content on there and, and totally dedicating that entire brand to the support side and the medical and, uh, and the, yeah. of, of firefighting. So we're looking really forward to that. And uh, it's been a rebrand from um the fire academy is now fire engineering training which it was always the fire engineering instructors and uh video all the way back to the bread and butter series to new videos we create for that and that is growing um leaps and bounds um so for your online training uh your lms what better 
product than to take FDIC into mm -hmm. your computer and have it there at the station right. to get credit. And that's that's EMS uh, and and fire. Right. So you can get that. And uh, the, the other big thing is books. We are cranking the books out and uh, we have so many. I, I don't have a list in front of me. I will never be able to remember them. But some of the ones that I'm just super excited about. Um, We've got Anthony Castro's and Brian Brush have just put out a new command book that is uh, awesome. Um, we worked out some details with, between fire engineering and fire nuggets to finally, finally officially produce <laughs> the official book of Andy Fredericks, of which we almost sold out in two days. <laughs> we had to stop sales so that we could bring books to FDIC. <laughs> And we have an emergency print order that's delivering more on Thursday here at the show. <laughs> and then um, I know, uh, Chris, you and I knew him. I'm not sure if Ted did, but uh, the late Chief Alan Brunicini, mm -hmm. um, we put Diane worked really hard and we put all of his articles and works together um, in the in the Brunicini book. Uh wouldn't be complete without a flowery Hawaiian shirt cover <laughs> and a special intro. We've tracked her down. It took us a while, but we actually found Mrs. Smith <laughs> and Mrs. Smith wrote the forward uh, for the book. So that's, uh, that's some good, good stuff there. We've got, we've got books on training officer that just came mm -hmm. out. Um, just the list. Uh, Andy Sakadato the, with the uh, water with thievery. The, yeah, water thievery. That's a great title. Yeah. <laughs> great title. That one's that one's doing well too. All these are available um, at the bookstore. And then don't forget any of the previous titles. The new titles aren't discounted, but the previous titles, I believe it's 30% mm -hmm. off at the bookstore. The bookstore looks incredible. Um, right behind us here, about a about a hundred or two hundred feet. Yeah. They're already open and they're kicking it. So uh um it looks like the halls are starting to fill up. Yep. Uh, yeah, starting to get busy. Pretty good there. And we're only on Monday. <laughs> we're only on Monday. So the big crowd comes in tomorrow night and then on Wednesday. So things are looking good here. We hope that uh, we hope we see you. Be sure to stop by the the podcast booth. We do have some some glass that you can make faces at us as you <laughs> walk by and wave. Uh, and if you, you know. Every now and then we might just pull in a surprise guest that happens to to walk by. But we are slammed full with the schedule. Um, these things will be happening about every hour mm -hmm. or so. And then we'll have some sponsored po podcasts, too, that will feature some products. But uh, stay tuned and watch for more. We are here live at FDIC in the Firehouse Subs podcast booth. And we will see you guys a little bit later. Thanks.